She was coming for me. What does she, she want? want? Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? Google Earth is a pretty amazing website, but it can also lead to some strange discoveries. In our next chapter, I will be telling you a story that originates from creepypasta. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. Since then, I really don't leave the house that often. It's difficult, and the idea of seeing a car drive by makes me feel lightheaded. So my friend showed me Google Maps. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world, almost like being there. I became instantly hooked. I'd virtually walk down streets in China, Japan, Germany, England, so many places. The faces of the people were always blurred to protect their privacy, but it was still enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their life, walking like it was no big deal. One day when I was looking around Tokyo, I spotted a woman wearing bright red sneakers, the same kind I was wearing. She must have good taste, I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed her black pants, her gray bag she carried over her black hooded jacket. She was walking in a relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet if I could have seen her face, she'd be smiling. I began to feel a little sad. I wish that I could be there, walking so carefree with her. That wouldn't happen though, until I died. I was stuck in this chair. I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo. I turned off the computer and went to bed. I got up early and decided to look around Paris. I randomly zoomed to an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings and a few small shops and an old tan brick church. I spun the view around a few more times and then saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench at the bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman with her feet stuck in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing those same red sneakers. I was startled for a moment as I noticed the black pants and black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her head. A gray bag sat on the bench beside her. This is crazy, I thought. It can't possibly be the same woman. This is a different country, different continent even. How could it be her? This is stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. They were taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. She could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell it was the same person. Brown is a common hair color. Those red sneakers were something I purchased online. I'm sure a million other people did too. I shook my head and went to fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street as usual. It looked pretty empty. There wasn't much to see at all, really. I was disappointed and moved my cursor to click away when something caught my eye. I turned the view and there they were. Those damn red sneakers. I stared in shock. How could she be there too? Even if she was traveling, there's no way I would find her every time. Even finding her in Paris would have been one heck of a coincidence, but this? This was crazy. Was this some kind of joke? Had Google decided to play a prank on its users that used their product so much? I did a quick search, looking for a note about a woman that shows up like Waldo. There was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can see on Google Maps, but none of them mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created a hallucination for myself? I sent a text message to a friend asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman. Then I waited, hands sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when my phone beeped. I see the lady you're talking about in Berlin. I didn't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of game or what? Are you okay? I didn't respond, instead returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris. There she was. I shivered. Who was she? What was happening? I switched to Sydney, then London, Zurich, Hong Kong. She was everywhere I looked. In each picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. My heart felt like a terrified bird slamming around inside my chest. Who was she? Was she following me? Was I following her? I wish I could see the expression on her face, know what she saw when she looked back at me. I wanted to get out of the chair and run. Why is it that the only thing that made me feel free again was the thing that made me feel even more trapped? I typed in the name of my town and zoomed into a random street. It was a couple of miles from my house. The gates to the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight, despite it being night here. There she was. There she was. She was only a few miles from my house. She was near me and she was watching me. She was coming for me. What does she, she want? want? I typed in the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. 
The parking lot was full of cars and there were a few blurred out children in the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or on the sidewalks, not hiding between the buildings or standing in the playground. I even scanned each of the cars, behind the bushes and each of the blurred windows. She wasn't there. I curled tightly around myself and lay my head down on the desk. This place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyway. I would never use Google Maps again. I would never see her again. She could stay at the park for all I cared. I'm okay. safe, I said to myself in a whisper. It felt good to hear it out loud. I'm safe. A chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked to my computer that showed who was at the front door. As I went to turn on the security feed, I realized the last of Google's images that I'd seen had only shown the outside of the building, just the outside. I looked at the screen and saw a woman in black pants in a black hooded jacket and carrying a gray bag with a shoulder strap. Of course, there were those red sneakers. She looked directly at the camera, her face still a complete blur as she reached her hand out in front of her. That's when I heard the front door slowly open. Want some Snarls merch? Head over to snarl.com where you can snag sweet pins and other items like a limited edition Something Scary poster. For more information, click the link in the description. And if you're planning on heading to VidCon, me and my fellow Snarl ladies will also be there on Thursday, June 22nd. Come say hi from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. And if you've got questions you're dying to ask, head over to our panel at 3.30. Like this video if it gave you the chills, and don't forget to subscribe to Snarls and check out our other videos. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.